don't try this at home. So in a recent vlog, I was talking about how all these storage cabinets in my office are really, really full and I wanted to repurpose one of the closets in my house for some additional storage. You might remember this is the closet that had my bamboo P1P in it for a while until I moved it to be with all my other printers, but it's just been sitting unused this whole time. So I went to put in some additional shelves, but I found out I really didn't have many of these. And when I see plastic parts, my brain's been trained to think, oh, can I 3D print that before I go out and buy it? These are side brackets that wire shelves sit in. You put them on the wall and they sit in here and it holds the shelf up. You don't really need the support things in small spaces like that. And these sell in a two pack at Lowe's for about $5.50. So just for ease of math, I'm going to consider each one of these to be $2.50. Yes, you get screws and some little wall anchors with it, uh, but a two pack is $5.50. So I printed up my own version here, these in PLA, PET G, and also an exhibition one in this uh, nylon carbon fiber. We're gonna be doing this one on the FL Sun. These we know are cheaper. These take 26 grams of filament to print and with the cost of $12 and some change on the spools of the Elegoo Rapid PLA Plus, because I buy it in a 10 pack, it comes out to about $12 per spool. 26 grams of filament comes out to about 30 something cents, uh, actually 32 cents. Let's just say 32 cents to print one of these. 12% of the total cost. So my aim is to see, well, will it hold up? Because I'm gonna be putting stuff on these shelves. I don't want it to fail. I'm pretty confident because this is printed at 100%. It feels really, really sturdy. And you can tell based on the structural layout of this, this is much beefier. Uh, so it costs less. I'm pretty sure it's stronger, but how much stronger? So I got this little doohickey here, a little crane scale. One I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little jig, put a load on this and then hang some, hang this on it. And then I'm going to pull down on this until this breaks. I'm going to test the PLA, the PET G, the nylon carbon fiber, and the original one to see which one's stronger and by how much. 3D printing is not only a great way to print things and sell on the internet for some side income, but for regular things around the house. And I do that kind of stuff all the time. Figured I'd demonstrate one of these small things uh, that I'm doing like that here in case anyone else seems to do that. And maybe you can help train your brain to kind of look for little plastic things that you could do and print for around the house to kind of save yourself some money and just have a good time doing it. All right, so here's my completely non-scientific testing method. I've got all of the samples lined up here. We've got our store-bought one here, our Rapid PLA Plus. All of them are at 100%, all at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Rapid PLA Plus, Rapid PET G, and this nylon carbon fiber. The nylon carbon fiber is not annealed and I didn't dry it at 100 C for like 12 hours or whatever it wanted. Uh, I did dry it somewhat. If you've been watching the channel, you know I've been working with this somewhat here and there. Uh, but I do expect this one to perform better because it's supposed to be really, really strong and you know capable of handling loads. Uh, but I think all of these are gonna perform well, really just given how thick they are. <laughs> Building this uh, sawhorse is going to be the longest part of the video. I'm having to use the damn Pythagorean theorem here because I need the sawhorse to be exactly 32 inches tall so the bar sets on it and it's perfectly level as to not like shift the load onto one side or the other. As long as you use the same sawhorse, it'll be apples to apples, but I want to get it as close to 32 as possible. It's these little things, you think you're going to spend all this time doing this one thing or the other. That, all that took 10 seconds. This is taking like, you know, gonna take like 20 minutes to figure out. And I'm just gonna throw this sawhorse away when I'm done because I have metal sawhorse. Why don't I just use the metal sawhorse? I don't wanna use the metal sawhorse because I don't wanna mess it up because I'm gonna use the tractor to be pressing down on this thing. <laughs> Ooh, pressure treated. Let's see. Pretty not close. Oh, well, you know what they say. If there's a mountain in your way, move the mountain. Okay, super scientific setup. I've got my little sawhorse here. I've got my samples here. And I've got this piece of rebar on which the load will be placed. And take my little crane scale, place it on here, and then exert a pulling downward force to simulate a shelf pulling down on the bracket until it fails. And then we'll record this and this doesn't have the stop feature to where it freezes at the highest measurement. So we'll just hopefully get it on camera. So we got our little shackle here. This is running. We're all chained up. I'm gonna turn this on. 
and then we're going to record it and then isolate it and then find out how far it went before it failed. thing hit 300 pounds and I was looking at the direction once it failed if the rebar like you know flew off maybe some additional safety measures all right I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna st I'm gonna stand behind a screen door that'll keep uh, rebar from flying off and impaling me in the face I can still operate the lever here and I'm safe All right, so we'll, get, we'll come back to what weight it failed, but it failed here at the uh, contact points, at the screws. You saw there's a pretty significant bend. It was several hundred pounds, so actually quite impressive. Don't try this at home. All right, all of them breaking at a similar spot right where the contacts are. I'm surprised. I thought they would break at the screws, but not the case, so this is our last one. The PA612CF, it's nylon CF, it's meant for heavy loads. So here is our aftermath. That one was pretty violent, and it looks like it failed here at the very bottom. So, you know, kudos to, uh, to the, where the brackets connect. And so let's see, I'm hoping I got that on camera. For the final roundup, do 3D printed shelf brackets beat the uh, store-bought thing that's more expensive? No. So it's two days later, I'm editing this video and realized that the crane scale for the PLA, the PETG, and the nylon carbon fiber was set to kilograms. I guess when I grabbed the scale, I hit the button switching the units. Uh, so recomparing everything, yeah, 3D printed parts are more stronger. So everything here at the end in my post, <laughs> my wrap up section is uh, kind of wrong. And I was right from the beginning. Of course I was right. Should have never doubted myself. Uh, the 3D parts are certainly much stronger. Not by a long shot. And I got to tell you, I was really surprised at this result. I thought for sure, just looking at how thick this is, 100% infill, you know, it made thicker. It seems to me that it would have, uh, it would have outperformed it, but that's simply not the case. It's almost as if when they engineer those things, they, uh, they engineer them to perform well and versus some uh, ad hoc, you know, slap together thing that I designed. Uh, but we found that all of these performed in that almost 200 pounds per bracket sort of area. And so if you've got four of these, uh, I doubt that's 2468, you're gonna be putting 800 pounds on a little wire shelf in the closet. Uh, the biggest load that it's ever gonna carry is probably some clothes or some you know storage things, uh, maybe, maybe a, a hundred pounds max. Um, I doubt anyone's gonna be putting much more than that. And if so, it's probably gonna hold it up. But nonetheless, it is uh, important to know that if you're going around 3D printing things, the option does exist. If you need a cheaper, faster alternative, you can 3D print them. Or if you just want to extract that data from this video that, you know, store-bought shelf brackets are going to be a better performer, then go for that. And ultimately, that's exactly what I did with my closet. I just used the store-bought ones because really it's a better aesthetic than, you know, 3D printed stuff. So let me know in the comments below, are there any other 3D printed things that you print around the house that you're maybe curious about testing? Or if you have a good idea for something that could be tested versus its store-bought 
alternative, something that people may be commonly printing for around the home because I'd love to give that a shot. I kind of like doing videos like this where I kind of put them to the test. I can have to use my brain and ingenuity to kind of figure out a way to test it and maybe I can hone my skill over time to kind of get a little more scientific in the process. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.